President Cyril Ramaphosa said during his virtual Human Rights Day speech yesterday that the country is now in a phase of recovery and reconstruction. Ramaphosa also said that government is working towards a new economy that will afford everyone in South Africa equal opportunities. The president added that the constitution is a shade and shelter for all. And political analyst Professor Lesiba Tifo says that, however, um, a democratic and equal South Africa is currently nothing but a pipe dream due to corruption and the lack of sound governance in our country. And he joins us now to discuss this further. Professor, good morning. Thanks for speaking to us. Morning, Shio, and the viewers. Now, strong words, Professor. You're saying uh, that a democratic um, uh, South Africa and um, all that uh, the president is basically alluding to an equal South Africa is currently nothing but a pipe dream. Please explain. If someone would say to me, that is not true. Those who have been around in the past 27 years would agree with me that while the, you, you, the, the Bill of Rights, just like the Freedom Charter, are aspirational documents. We should commit ourselves to the realization of those dreams and ideals. But sometimes we are the very ones who are working out against the attainment of those dreams. Yes, he spoke about unity, right? He spoke about... Uh, uh, inclusivity, about nation building. Are we really on the right trajectory? Yes. The first ten, first 10 years under President Mbeki and President Mandela, we looked like we are on the path of realizing the dream of a, a rainbow nation. Later on, things started to fall apart and the center failed to hold. We are more divided today than we were at least 20 years ago. And I, I dare say, look around when we celebrate public holidays, national days. There are fewer whites, Indians and colors, and I don't blame them. I'm just advancing a question, why is it so? And can I with a straight face, we are more inclusive today we, have, we are realizing the, 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 um, the values that undergird our constitution, namely reconciliation, social cohesion, and nation building. We don't seem to be winning, though the rhetoric may suggest otherwise. But my observation is a lot still to be done. Professor, where do you believe we went wrong? Uh, yes, yes. And uh, indeed, as uh, Brutus said, Please, the fault is not with the stars, but the fault is with us that we are underlings. For as long as when you celebrate National Heritage Days, National Days, public holidays, where everybody should come under, under the, the same, in the same tent under, under a marula tree to celebrate and to, to enjoy, you use an alienating language, a language that tells me how bad my forebears are and how good you are. I have no reason to come tomorrow to come and listen to the same thing. Not at all, right? So there is this alienating language that is used by the politicians in an endeavor to denounce and renounce racism and race. They use racial categories that worsen the situation. So be mindful of that. Number two, when it comes to appointments, whatever you call it, but I think many today are beginning to accept. While the intentions were good, but some would find it justifiable to say BEE, -E, affirmative action, are alienating and are undermining social cohesion, are undermining nation building. Never, people mustn't forget affirmative action where it was founded in the US. It was intended to empower, to alleviate the material conditions of the wretched of the earth. But it was never intended to be a permanent feature of social organization. I remember then President Mahlantese 
say, is it not time we do away with affirmative action? For it was never intended to be a permanent feature of our social structure. But yes, we are not willing to engage that. That cannot augur well for social cohesion, nation building, and reconciliation. You go to the tender system. Who are the people tendering? There are those who don't even try to apply. I spend my life in the university space to date. I, I, I find it regrettable that there are certain executive positions that whites, Indians and colors and whites in particular would not apply for those positions. Never mind their academic and intellectual work because they feel already automatically excluded. Can we talk about social cohesion, nation building and reconciliation? I'm inviting my society to begin to engage and to say, where did we go wrong and how can we correct this? Uh, let's just stay on the notion, uh, the question of affirmative action in BEE for a second. So if we look at the rationale, the objective behind the implementation of these policies, and as you say, they may not have been intended to be around forever, but there was a specific reason as to why it needed to happen. It was about redress. Uh, you know, it was about trying to create some sort of equilibrium, especially in our economic sphere. Would you say that has been achieved? And I think it's a rhetorical question because it's a resounding no. But does it mean that because there was a failure in the implementation, we should now do away with the policy? Or should we still endeavor to try and implement it correctly so that more and more South Africans can actually benefit from it. Look, unless you have a time frame, right, another 500 years we can still talk and try to justify this. Um, just like racism, I'm a scholar in this space and I say you will never eliminate it, but try to contend with it to the extent possible. It's almost a human condition. The ideal would be to eliminate racism. But 2,000 years down the line, there is sufficient evidence for on my part and scholarship that says it is not that easy. Even the most celebrated democracies, people are still crying, are still mourning and bemoaning its existence. But the ideal is to aspire for is eradication. That is, that's right. Now, you come back to affirmative action. If, Remember, even the leading party at the time, they knew it was meant to be for a minimal time. Similarly, with the constitution we have, it was supposed to be an interim constitution. And indeed, in an endeavor to live up to what they committed themselves to. In 2002 or around that, they tried to amend the constitution, but they lacked the political courage and will and the appetite to implement the recommendations from Fancil Slabet on electoral reform. So please, let's not try to fool ourselves and to fool the people. The fact is, we are not honest with ourselves. We know where our problems lie. But what is called cognitive dissonance is the one that we are victims thereof. We don't just want to have the political courage to do the right things and to be seen and to join the winning nations of the world. South Africa is well endowed intellectually and even in terms of mineral resources. But we cannot continue with policies that are inimical to nation building, social cohesion and reconciliation. Mm. Uh, you know, today is a public holiday as a result of yesterday, uh, due, uh, March the 21st, being Human Rights Day. And even in that, um, I remember engaging in a conversation yesterday with some friends about just the naming of the day, Human Rights Day. And... Um, the belief among some is that it actually detracts from what it is that that we are trying to commemorate on the day. So if it is Human Rights Day, why don't you align Human Rights Day with International Human Rights Day? And we all know what it's about. And in that reconciliation effort that you speak about, Professor Tifo, why can't we call it Sharpville Day so that it actually has meaning? What is it about our reconciliation effort that seeks to, in some instances, almost nullify some of the events um, and, and maybe water down the significance of some salient moments in our history? 
that we are raising this point because it's only when you and I begin to engage uh, these matters and at least commit to calling them what they are. Political expediency, I would call it, is the one perhaps that led us to renaming Shabville Day what it is today. Because then it, it becomes a bit difficult for me as a teacher to try to explain um, that it is in fact Shabville that day or it started with Shabville and this is what it was about. And you want to talk about Shab, uh, Human Rights uh, Day and you don't even want to mention the name Robert Sobuke. We are distorting history, but we are not lying anybody to anybody but ourselves. The truth of the matter is the, 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 we have to find a way to be honest enough, even with those that we have the responsibility to educate, to nurture, so that they can become responsible leaders who put a high premium on intellectual honesty than political expediency. Unfortunately, we are wounding our students and our children. You look to them even when they speak, smouthing slogans that they don't even know what exactly they mean. They will talk about Human Rights Day, but if you ask them, uh, why not Shabville Day? Suddenly they don't realize the relationship between the two. Yes, let's engage, let's be honest, let's empower, let's educate. But there is a point. I think we want to deepen uh, national identity. We want to strengthen a national identity. And I want to leave with this question. How many nations do we have within the South African nation state? Hmm. How many nations? Is it possible, therefore, to craft a national identity when we have got many nations within a nation? You've got the Babedi nation, their king passed on. You've got the Zulu nation, their king passed on. We have got King, right? Zulu team, not a King um, Dalinyebo. You have King Umulokere. Are we going to say all of them are the nations? If we say no, then we are unfair. We are not honest. We are contradictory. So I expect the president and them, those who lead the charge, to try to explain that we need to craft a national identity. We can't have states within a state. The tension will persist indirectly or directly, inadvertently or otherwise. We'll find ourselves as the enablers and of dissonance in what we are trying to create, a nation state that is founded on the values of reconciliation, social cohesion, and nation building. Uh, isn't that also because we are obsessed with platitudes? Um, you know, you look at uh, some of the founding slogans that we have in a democratic South Africa, such as unity and diversity. But what does that mean if, if, if we don't actually care to expand upon it to understand what it means in terms of the example that you just gave, you know, about a nation state. How many nations do we have within the nation state? How does all of this come together? How do we respect each other for our differences and our diversity if we don't even know what it encompasses? You know, all of these questions we don't necessarily seem to grapple with as a nation. But you also said, Professor Diffo, that a new way of thinking in government is needed to turn things around in South Africa. Um, in closing, please just elaborate on that. President, my president, please lead from the front. Please lead from the front. It can't be him expressing statements that are contrary and inimical to social cohesion, nation building and reconciliation. That's why people will just walk away and say, you know, it belongs to them and not us. The us and them bifurcation, directly or indirectly, the politicians tend to promote. For as long as when you speak, you sound like you speak for one nation or for one group of people in the country, you are not going to win. Yesterday, the cutlers are said to me, that we were black, but today we are not black enough because we hear the leadership in the ruling party that we belong to say blacks in general, Africans in particular. The language is very important in nation building. Language is very important in nurturing a person and a people's culture. Language is very 
central to what we want to achieve, an inclusive society. And when they get to the platform, and, so, and media platforms and otherwise, let them be mindful of the language they use. Let it not be divisive. Let it not be alienating. But let it engender a message of, a message of hope a message that says it is possible to build one nation state, our diversity notwithstanding, and indeed celebrating our diversity within that nation state. It is possible, and I ask my president to lead from the front. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Lise Matefo, who is a political analyst, talking to us about his views on human rights in South Africa. This, of course, after we commemorated Human Rights Day yesterday and the speaking to the massacres that took place in Sharpeville and Langa in 1960.